Tonight on the show, we've got the new Doctor Who. I wonder if this TARDIS is really bigger on the inside. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, it is! Let's start the show! you ladies and gentlemen and I tell you we're back with a big bang from across time and space the new Doctor Who Peter Capaldi is here <laughs> he's good isn't he he's good Bond girl and graduate of St. Trinian's Gemma Arterton is on the show we love Gemma and Hollywood is coming calling Oscar winning star of Training Day in Philadelphia Denzel Washington is here We've got music from hot new singer, songwriter, George Ezra, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he's a baby. He's a little baby. He's, he's like a child. <laughs> now, Denzel Washington, of course, famous for his action films, Unstoppable with that runaway train, a Flight with a crashing plane in it, Deja Vu, the exploding fairy. Basically, what I'm saying is, if he sits next to you on the bus, get off it. Just get off. <laughs> Uh, I will be talking to Denzel about his new film, The Equalizer. Mm. Now, he plays a retired soldier who's now working in a DIY store. Now, it's more exciting than that makes it sound. I'll tell you, more <laughs> happens. The story unfolds. Now, there he is, there he is. He's just attacked someone with a hammer. And you think, why would you attack somebody you've just seen in a DIY store? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Gemma Arthur, Gemma Arthur, she'll be telling us all about her uh, new role in the West End musical Made in Dagenham. Now, it's uh, set in the 60s at the Ford factory in Dagenham, Essex. And, of course, back then, Essex was famous for churning out escorts in a production line. Well... <laughs> sort of still is. You can get any colour you want, as long as it's orange. <laughs> Made in Dagenham is a lively musical romp set in the swinging 60s. Here's Dagenham in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, the only thing swinging there was this. <laughs> Can I just say, kudos to the team for finding a picture of a wrecking ball that didn't have Miley Cyrus glued to it. <laughs> hey, Gemma, Gemma always looks so glamorous on the red carpet. Now, the thing is, not everyone can pull off an outfit that has a nude-coloured stripe through the middle. Did you all see the ladies' Colombian cycling team? <laughs> Just standing there. Our humiliation is complete. <laughs> yeah, Colombian with a hint of Brazilian. <laughs> hey, and a big first time welcome to Peter Capaldi. Yeah, I tell you, there he is, the new doctor. Looking so cool there, isn't he? Very cool. But I will be posing the question, what were you thinking when we look at some of his early modelling pictures? <laughs> yeah. That is a genuine picture from his portfolio. That's casual wear. There's also formal wear, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that isn't awkward at all, is it? <laughs> the new Doctor Who series. You're watching it, yeah? yeah? It's good, isn't it? I tell you, the first episode, oh, so much action. Oh, look at that. <laughs> a dinosaur loose in Victorian London. Mind you, it does look ridiculously out of place. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's all the guys for plus more of your stories in the big red chair. Let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll be having music from the brilliant George Ezra. The first, Norton Ears of Who, it's Peter
much. Uh, welcome back, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Gemma. And of course, it's a tradition a first time welcome to the new Doctor Who, Peter Capaldi. Yay! Thank you very much. Are you familiar with the whole Doctor Who fuss, no. fuss about Doctor Who? No. Well, let me explain. Uh, <laughs> so, Peter wasn't Doctor Who, now he is Doctor Who, and obviously you talked to previous Doctor Whos, uh -huh. but nothing can prepare you. So, are you enjoying being Doctor Who? I love being Doctor Who. It's absolutely amazing. I wake up in the morning and I'm Doctor Who. <laughs> and I go out to the shops and buy a pint of milk, I'm Doctor Who. And I go and get the papers, I'm Doctor Who. And everywhere I go, I'm Doctor Who. And people smile at me and, and people are pleased to see Doctor Who, who is far more interesting and exciting than I am. <laughs> but actually, but Denzel's new movie is set in a big DIY yes. superstore. Yeah. And didn't you go... Was it one of those shops you went to the next day? Uh, I was... So, uh, Denzel charmingly doesn't know anything at all about Doctor Who and was asking me what the TARDIS or, or, was. Or, 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 or uh, what is it? TARDIS. TARDIS. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. It sounds wrong when you say it. <laughs> TARDIS. But the day after I was announced as Doctor Who, which is sort of quite a big deal in this country, um, I went to buy a, a light bulb because a light bulb had obviously uh, <laughs> had gone wrong in my house. And I went into there was an old um, uh, hardware store, like the old, you know, the four candles kind of sketch? Oh, yes. One of those yeah, ones. Yeah. I went in there to, to, to buy this light bulb, and a bloke came out from behind the counter with a, a sink plunger stuck to his head like that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I, I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, though, you know, because you were, you were, you know, in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. As Mark Doug, you were yeah. quite sweary and quite yes, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have to be very careful meeting people in the street now? Yes, of course, yes, because Doctor Who doesn't... I, I, I played a character who was a spin doctor for the, for the, for the Prime Minister, um, who uh, swore all the time. Uh, and really used very, very, very rich the language. Worst, yes, the worst. the worst sort of language. Mm. But fans of the show would come up to me in the street and say, swear at me, please, please swear at me. Uh -huh. uh, so I'd have to stand in the street and abuse them <laughs> with the worst possible language. I'd sign their autographs and say, get lost, go and get a life, stand home. I'd love to be able to do that with people in the street. <laughs> it was great fun. <laughs> you lost. could. I could, I'd get in trouble. But like now, do you have to be squeaky yes. clean? Well, I am squeaky clean. Are you contractually obliged not to swear at people in the street? No, no, I can swear at my own time, obviously. Not <laughs> <laughs> my own entertainment, but uh, I haven't sworn for about uh, two years now. <laughs> I said I don't believe you. Uh, listen, we'll talk more about Doctor Who later, uh, plus Gemma's new musical. But let's start tonight with uh, Denzel's new movie, The Equalizer. Yes. I've seen it. It's fantastic. It's a, Thank I, you. I mean, it's one of those movies that must be a pleasure to talk about because it is such a crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's a, yeah, 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 a yeah. proper big yeah, people punching movie. the air yeah. and cheering at yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. And now it just borrows the name, really. From Basically, the, yeah. From yeah, the, the name and the, and the basic idea that uh, he helps people who need help. And I'm guessing th there's more planned. We gotta get this one out first. You know, they, they, they talked about that, but that it's up to the people. If the people decide they want the people. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, you know, that's the last part of a movie or a, or a play is the audience or like your show. I mean, you couldn't just do it here by yourself. <laughs> It might be easier. Yeah, yeah it might be easier. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, if, if people aren't aware of what the premise of the equalizer is, uh, tell the people. He helps people who need his help, and uh, he does what he needs to do to get them out of whatever <laughs> trouble they're in. And when, when he says that, it's not helping old ladies cross the road. No, uh, that's right. If they need it, no, I would, I'm not above that. Yeah, I but mean... you would kill the, the guy in the car. No, because it's pretty old, full on violence. It's, it's, well, he, 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 he yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he's, he's a quiet man with OCD who lives alone, lives a quiet life, and this girl needs his help, and he helps her, and people get in his way, and he uses various uh, instruments from the, what do you call it, the DIY? DIY. The DIY, <laughs> DIY, do, do it, it yourself. yourself store. You know, power tools. <laughs> You've looked so much to I know. Tar Tar Tardis. Tardis. Tardis, Doctor Who, D DIY. DIY. Wow. Four candles. <laughs> Four candles. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't tell him that. Back no, then. no, no, no. Well, actually, talking of jokes, talking of jokes, this has been annoying us all day, and I think Peter Polly might know. Maybe you know. What? In the office, we can't remember what it is. Edward Woodward. The original, uh, yeah. yes, yes. So there is a joke, and the punchline is... Is Edward Woodward. Wood. Oh, without the letters? Is, yes, what is Edward... How do you... What is it? Edward. How do you say Edward Woodward without, without the Wood. D's? 
But oh, no, that, no, that's not a joke, though. It's Iwa Wuwa is Iwa the answer. Without, how do you... Say it without the Ds. Is, right? it, is it why does he need so many Ds in his name? Right. Is that the joke? Something like that. Iwa, there's also no. something about farting in a bath. Someone must know in the audience. Oh, there you have it. <laughs> Yes, I told you. Yes, I told you. Is it not a who would Edward Woodward would? <laughs> right. Oh, there's another one. That's yes, another, that's that's another a joke. It's a kind of rather racy situation right. that is posited. Now, do you have who this would... in England? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Yeah. He'd chuck how much wood is a woodchuck uh, good if a woodchuck could chuck wood, but he can't? <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah, we, we got a couple of things in America. We, I'm so impressed. You no, do you say that? that? No, no, you, no, you have that. You've had a long day actuary. of press. <laughs> That's all oh my God. I'm amazing you can string any words together at all. <laughs> uh, we've got a clip. We've got a clip for the Equalizer. By the way, the Equalizer uh, is open tonight. It's open nationwide tonight. Uh, this is uh, basically you showing off some of your special skills. This is a, uh, you know, a don't mess with Denzel. Uh oh. Is it just you or are we waiting for someone else? I'm sorry, what? Your hands. If you really work the power lines down there, your hands wouldn't look like that. I know we gotta be waiting for somebody else. <laughs> hands where I can see him. We take a little walk across the street, me and you. Black Denali. Here we go. Be very for these instructions and I'm gonna kill you, understand? Stand. Let's just go. No witnesses. What the hell is this guy doing? Go. And I actually read the book. <laughs> no, you know, we had, we had like Navy SEAL guys, uh, expert killers, and we were using everything, books and, you know, like... So tools. are these real things, like the Navy SEALs trained? Yeah, they would show me what to do with a book and how to... That looks impressive. <laughs> he flapped me to death. <laughs> but listen, Gemma Arthur, beside you, right, we've seen you, you know, in films, being kick-ass and doing stuff, but in life, you're quite, you're quite, well, I was going to say rough, but not in that way. Just... <laughs> <laughs> like, the horse riding thing sounds amazing. Yeah. So tell us what you can do on the horse. I can do trick riding and stunt riding. How long did this take, by the way? Um, so I learned to ride um, in, I did sort of like a month's training, and then I got a bit obsessed with it and started, you know, um, doing trick riding. So I guess within like a couple of months. So Prince of Persia, you do all that horse riding yourself? Yeah, there was a, a riding double as well for really dangerous stuff, but I did do a big stunt, um, which I'm really proud of. Tell us about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a bit where um, a horse, a massive big old black horse is galloping towards me and I pull myself onto the horse whilst it's in gallop from standing. Um, so basically you hold onto the horse's reins and you, while it's galloping, j jump up onto it and gallop off. And um, I trained for it for a long time, you know, for days and days and days and days and weeks. And then when it came down to it, it was this big Disney movie, so it's very expensive. And um, I said, you know, I can do that stunt. I've, I've practiced it to the producers. Uh -oh. And they went, no way, you're not doing it. It's too dangerous. And I was like, oh, I've been practicing for weeks. And, really <laughs> and they were like, for oh, God's sake, all right, she can do it. And I did. And it's in the movie. And obviously, everyone thinks it's the stunt double, usually, unless you do something like this. Gallop, gallop. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, how you because, Denzel, you are now going to be doing this. A Western. Yeah. Are you learning to ride now? Uh, October 1st, I start. <gasps> Five or six months of riding. Wow, you're going to be great. It's such a great opportunity. I got to wait. Let me... I'll come and help. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the best the, the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look for that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I may not make the film. You get the credit, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, someone told me, too, in the old days, they would put little trampolines for guys, like in the westerns, and they'd bounce off of it and jump right up on the horse to make it look like they... Oh, oh. so that's why they just... Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you'll see that as well. <laughs> Peter uh, Cavalli, you've done you've you've done some very dangerous things over the years. Didn't you? Wasn't it quite recently you had an injury? 
Was oh it yes, I was in the Three Musketeers, yes. which as you know, it's lots of sword fighting, and it's the, you know, and guys are jumping off horses and, and hitting each other, and everyone had kind of broken shoulder blades and stuff like that, and I played Cardinal Richelieu, who was a more waspish character, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to grab a lady and give her into trouble and throw her against the wall, and as I was doing it, I suddenly sort of internally screamed with agony and looked down and my thumb was caught in her frock. <laughs> it was Mamie McCoy, and I looked down and my thumb was on back to front. <gasps> Wait, that's what you get if you do put your thumb in ladies' frocks without asking. Yeah, you were lucky that's all that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that to Gemma. Yeah. <laughs> I just snapped it back into place. So Ooh. It, was, uh, Ooh, no. it was really so. And to this day, I can't open a pack of crisps. No. It's awful for me. Oh, gosh. Jeez, You're looking great. <laughs> he used to be much heavier. Yeah. <laughs> Talk, talking of finger injuries, uh, we were going through pictures. Uh, we were going through pictures uh, before the show, and we found this picture. Oh, you found my pinky. <laughs> oh, don't show it. No, no, this is. No, th we have nice. to see this. This it's is amazing. Not nice. It's not nice. <laughs> it looks like Meryl Streep has just gone. Tell me, I did a back accent. She's just like, look at that. She's like, how? What, what did you do? I had it re rebuilt. I had injured it so many times playing football, American it, football. It's, it's this one, one. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it's fine now. But it's like a gummy bear in there. Like a little piece of rubber candy yeah. something. So what was that thing? I went up for a pass playing American football and dislocated it. And it's happened so many times over the years that if I just opened my hand like that, it would pop that far. Oh, shit. But, did people, but did people, like in films, do they have to like shoot around no, it, it? No, I'm constantly, you can, you can probably see me in other films just going, yeah. <laughs> that way. And I, I, I was always fixing it. When my kids were young, they would ask me, Daddy, could you show my friends the magic finger? Wait a minute. No, you went there. I didn't go there. You went there. You went there. No, I didn't. So I, I would like do like this, and I'd do like this, and then I'd, and then run out. <laughs> Gemma Arthur, award-winning actress, kick-ass movie star, and now treading the boards in a new musical, which is really, it's so exciting, I'm a brand so new musical. Uh, it's at Maiden Dagnum, which sometimes you hear about things being made into musicals, and you're going to think, is that a good idea? But this is clearly a very good idea. It is. It's such a rousing, great story. Yeah, I, well, it's because it's based on real events, and it's about these women that are so normal and, and charming and real and um, did something extraordinary. They got the Equal Pay um, Act sort of into the system and um, and they're just these lovely ladies from Essex. Um, I should tell people, by the way, it opens in the West End on the 5th of November. That's the big glitzy officially. night. But then the previews are from the 9th of October. Mm -hmm. That's what so I've settled the good thing. And uh, in the real story, so they get equal pay in the Ford factory in Dagenham, but does that open it up for women across the country? Yeah, well, what happens in our story is slightly different to what happened in real life. Um, they, they sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the girls sang as well um, in real life. But, yeah, it, it, it really opened it up. They were the first to get equal pay in the workplace, and it set up the whole Equal Pay for Equal Work Act, which was already instrumental in America at the time, but not in the UK. So um, if a man's doing the same job as a woman, they should be getting equal pay. So that's what these women did. And so and it was you, huge. And have you been back to Essex? Have you met the women? Are they around? The women are actually here tonight. Oh, oh. Come and wave your la hands, ladies. There they wow. are. Oh. So is it Gwen, Eileen, Vera? Yes. Yeah. And presumably you saw the movie. Have you seen any of the workshops of the musical yet? Yes. A part yes. of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen doesn't seem that keen. I, <laughs> I saw a bit of it, yeah. I'm not sure I said that the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but did you like the musical? Say yes, say yes. You're on television, oh, say yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, good. <laughs> say yes, you've got free tickets and taxi home. <laughs> <laughs> But so at the time, did you, I mean, was there a big fuss? Were you in the papers and did it seem like a big deal at the time? When it first started. At the time, yeah, but after it was all over, it was all forgotten. So that was a total surprise when the movie came out? Well. <laughs> <laughs> movie? What movie? What is that about? man talking about? <laughs> it's a musical. <laughs> We've seen a bit of it. <laughs> 
do you stay in touch because of the movie and things? Is that what brought you back together again? Or have you been friends all these years? All the time. All the time. Oh, that's sweet. That's fantastic. They just got you back on holiday. Thank you for coming. They go on holiday together. Oh, really? Fantastic. Gemma's just saying you go on holiday together. Yes. With all your extra pay. We <laughs> <laughs> a holiday fund, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, the singing. Yeah. I feel like we should have known you were a singer by now. How did this happen? Have you always been a singer? Yes, but it's um, I, it, the right thing hasn't come along. I've want, always wanted to do a musical, but I wanted to do something that was original and had never been done before. And you know, if I, I've sung in films, but not really. But yeah, so this is the first time in public. Not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot. Uh, no, 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 not to sing a whole song. Because, are there any bits? Well, a little bit. For me. Can you do a little bit? All right. There's a song called "Busy Woman," which starts the show, and it's all the all the girls in the house doing their housework, and you go. If you want something done, ask a busy woman. Cos you're wasting your time asking a man. <laughs> she can do in one hour what you can't do in ten. It's the basic effing difference between us and effing them. If you want it done, then ask a busy woman. Whoa! Eileen's like, oh yeah, it's better than I remembered. It's <laughs> quite good. Yeah. Oh, it's come, it's come on, it's come on. Yeah. They've never seen that song. You haven't seen that one, have you? No. <laughs> they don't remember the entire film, Gemma. I really wouldn't go. I wouldn't go on individual songs. Um, so here's the thing. Gemma and Peter have something in common because Gemma was in a band. Now, what was the name of your band? Violent Pink. Was this when you were in school? When I was in Gravesend. Yeah, we were a four-part girl band. Um, were you kind of punky? Yeah, it was a kind of, like, angsty, Alanis Morissette kind of stuff with harmonies. Because I think Violent Pink is a good name for a band. Yeah. Peter Capaldi's band. I would say <laughs> a, less, a less good name. What was your band called? Uh, the Dream Boys. <laughs> This was at a time before the Chippendales and, and, and <laughs> things like that. And remember, we were all just kids at art school, so we were thought we were being very sort of uh, Kafka-esque and arty and dark. But of course, people didn't think that. They thought they were booking a bunch of guys to come up and <gasps> take yeah. their clothes off, which uh, we, we we didn't do, but we would if, if, if people paid us. <laughs> uh, so before that, we were called. Uh, our first name was uh, the Bastards from Hell. <laughs> Which was more appropriate to the punk ethos that we were cleaving to. <laughs> Denzel, have you ever dabbled in, in musicals? Uh, no. <laughs> but Denzel, do a movie. You bust a move. You, oh, I got my, my little, uh, what do you call it, Gladys Knight in the Pit. Look at him go! Yeah! It, it, was that choreographed or was that all in That's you? That's all me. That's all me. <laughs> I YouTube them and I stood in front of the computer and I'm like, <laughs> Do you want a little bit of music? Let's do you have let's some? say it was music. <laughs> and that that is that's that's as violent as the film. <laughs> He lies. <laughs> uh, now, Peter Capaldi, new Doctor Who. I, I had no idea. Your career is extraordinary. So, ev no, no. Let's, uh, so let's start with Doctor Who. So every Doctor Who always says, oh, I was a fan when I was a kid growing up. This man, I mean, you are beyond a fan. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because none of this would have come out. None of this would have come out. My total geekness, my total anorakness as a child, as a teenager, would have been left No, to... the good thing is, your letters... Oh, oh no, 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 there's a letter... <laughs> yeah. No, no, we don't have... No, there was a very sweet letter you sent to the Radio Times, which we won't read that one out. That was just <laughs> you saying how much you like the Doctor Who special. No, there's this weird thing, right? <laughs> so there's a Doctor Who fan club, and the guy around that, Keith Miller, he put... This is volume one. You can imagine the size of his anorak. This is volume one of the... This isn't the story of the Doctor Who. This is the story of the fan club. <laughs> Volume one. <laughs> so Peter decided he was. He oh, th no, there was a fan man, club. I can't believe you're going to do Peter this. Peter decided he should be oh, the head no. of the fan club. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. So he wrote. He 
wrote to Sarah Newman at the Doctor Who office. This is proper. Oh, this is a woman no. who really works for the BBC. I can't even remember this. Oh, no, no, no. How old were you when this... When... Oh, don't even... 21. <laughs> This is the reply. This is the reply to you. Okay. Uh, so, dear Peter, thank you for your letter. Firstly, the pictures aren't ready yet. And secondly, I'm afraid we have an official Doctor Who fan club secretary. I'm passing your letter on to him, and I expect he will send you a newsletter himself. He wasn't Sarah, Sarah Newman. See, that's all very nice. Right. That's right. very nice. Right. Then in another letter to the guy who is the secretary of the fan club, uh, she writes, No, 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 you're not by any means worse than Peter C. <laughs> <laughs> I had a very sad letter back from him today. I think I'd better write and apologise. I think he's the end, and I wish the Daleks or someone would exterminate him or something from that effect. Oh, she works for the BBC! Where is she now? <laughs> right. She's here tonight! Yeah. And I'm Dr. Who! Yeah. 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 Take that! Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. I can't imagine the BBC let that happen. That's <laughs> but how annoying must you have been? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish uh, something would kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, despite all that stuff of being a kid, I loved Doctor Who when I was a kid, and then you reach an age when you get involved in sex and drugs and rock and roll and you move on and you sort of, you know, you have a life. Uh, I mean, as I say, I spent a lot of time drinking. <laughs> a lot of time drinking and eating curries uh, and getting very confused, which is where the modelling comes from. Wait, where? So the modelling, I so don't understand the modelling. So yeah, this yeah. picture, I sort of oh. understand. <laughs> I kind of, that one, I mean, awful as it is, it sort of makes sense. This next one, was the cameraman <laughs> blind? What, what? I don't know what that's about. That's, and there's something that isn't a pose at all. I know. And why can't I even put my elbow on the on the on the on, on the stool? <laughs> Something's going on there. That's just being an idiot. That's just being you don't know anything. You know, I don't know. Nobody gives you a book to say this is how you become an actor, this is what you do. You're just an idiot, you know, drinking <laughs> lager and having curry and people say but now you send, you're an actor. Did you send those pictures out to people? No, they were nothing to do with me. That was a it was it was a it was a popular daily newspaper. Oh, so they were published? Yes. <laughs> Was you trying to be a model? No, no, they, no. Were, they were published. They were published. Obviously, I was a, a style icon. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then, so you look at that, you look at that picture, and you think, clearly, he's finished. He will never be troubled by success. <laughs> <laughs> you can put a big stamp guarantee loser on it. <laughs> what an amazing moment, then, all these years later, when you're sitting in a dressing room waiting to walk on the set to be Doctor Who. Yeah. That must have been mind blowing. Yeah, it was amazing. It was wonderful. It was a great gift and privilege and, and great fun. Yeah. It's brilliant. And didn't you have to pretend not to know how to use the TARDIS when you got the part? Weren't people trying to explain to you how to do it? Well, everybody, you see, they do all the stuff that you've just read out. They didn't know. So I, I go on the set and guys say, well, what you turn that switch there, that's like, so that, this is that. I said, I know how to work this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me how to work this. I know. <laughs> There's, this is, again, this is one of those weird coincidence type stories. You're in the Czech Republic when you find out. What's that sweet story about? Uh, the story is that uh, it's very secret when you become Doctor Who. Because there's still, a, there's still Matt Smith, who was wonderful, who was, uh, he was still being Doctor Who. So they keep it a secret when there's a new Doctor Who. Uh, but I knew I was cast, but I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. And I happened to be, you know, being Cardinal Richelieu uh, in, in the Musketeers in the, in the Czech Republic. And we moved, um, we were filming and then we moved to the north of the Czech Republic to a place called Moravia, to a very small town there. Uh, and we were filming this scene. Uh, and I was in all my resplendent kind of uh, Richelieu dark cloak and stuff like this. And there was a little lad who was playing a page boy. And he came and started talking to me. And he, didn't, he couldn't speak English very well. He said, I love you as Doctor Who. <gasps> you love me as Doctor Who? And he, he said, yeah, I love you as Doctor I, I thought, how can this, how can he know uh, here? Nobody, I can't even tell anybody on the production. And he said, I loved you in the episode about Pompeii. And what he was saying was, he loved me in an episode of Doctor Who, because I had been in an episode uh, with David Tennant uh, uh, playing uh, yeah, a yeah. character in Pompeii. Uh, I said, do you like Doctor Who? He said, I love it. He said, I'm a Whovian. And I thought, I've stumbled across the only person in the Czech Republic <laughs> who knows this show, and he loves it. And he's standing next to the new Doctor Who. Oh. And he doesn't know. Did you say Yeah, I was going to say, did I, you tell No, him? I said nothing. I said, have you got, have you got a oh. picture? Have you got a, fo a phone with a, a, a camera? He said, I haven't got it on, on me. I said, go and get it, go and get a camera. You should have your picture taken with me. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, that is 
so sweet. He wasn't very interested in doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, listen. Peter continues as Doctor Who on Saturdays at 8.30 on BBC One. And yes, we have a very exclusive clip. This isn't from uh, tomorrow's episode. This is from a week tomorrow. And uh, presumably you can't tell us anything about this. I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's all enjoy this exclusive clip of next week's Doctor Who episode. I think we'll find your radio. Back, 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 back with the door. A door! Here! Here! The door's locked! Come on, come on! There's no power to work it! Come on! Doctor! Stay still! It's sensing movement. It can't see you. Fast movement. There must be another exit through there. Slowly. To that exit. Slowly, 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 slowly. Gently, gently. When I say run, run. Who made you the boss? What did you say, run? I know. I tell you. Before our first stories of the series in the big red chair, it's time for our musical guest. This young man's debut album is at the top of the charts, and his first single, Budapest, went gold in five countries. Tonight, performing his second single, Blame It On Me, please welcome George Ezra! <laughs> By the gods of me and you We hear the wheels For to find ourselves some truth What you waiting for No, what you waiting for We counted all our reasons Excuses that we made We found ourselves some change And threw it all away What you waiting for No, what you waiting Blossom, caught in the carnival. Your confidence forgotten. I see the gypsies roll. What you waiting for? No, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? No, what you waiting for? When I dance alone in the sun.
Great job, sir. Come and join us with me. Come on. Come on, let me join us. That was our Courtney Gold. Hello, sir. Hey, very nice hey, to meet you. Thank you very much. Say hi. Good. Good. How are you? How are you doing? Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's your actual Denzel Washington right there. Very good. Very good. Oh, so uh, congratulations on everything, sir. Yeah, thank you very no, much. No, it's very cool. How old are you? This is I'm, I'm 21. 21. Yeah. Oh, God. You look 11. <laughs> <laughs> but the song is fantastic, and that, that's the new single. Budapest is being number one all over the place. The, yeah. That album is still in the charts. It's still near the top. That's the best bit about it. When you release an album, it's nice to know that the album sticks around. Yeah. Not just a song. That's the nice thing. And uh, the cover of the album, Wanted on Voyage. Oh, you've got it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, got a computer and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. Uh, <laughs> Even I have a computer. <laughs> so, no, it's clever. So, this is obviously that's you in the middle there. That's definitely. And me, then yeah. who's everyone else? So, these people so you everyone, know. No, surrounding it is my family and friends. They're all um, dressed up as different people. Um, Who, who's that in the curlers? Well, you kind of ruined it there because she's oh. not family or a friend, Matt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. Tip for the future. Lie. Okay. <laughs> that's my Auntie Edith. Yeah. <laughs> How is it, your voice sounds so sweet, really, when you speak, but yeah. then you're, you're, and your singing voice is great, too, yeah. but it sounds much deeper. Do Just you know, style. yeah, I could never really sing. My brother and sister could. Um, and I used to sing a lot, but I wasn't very good. And then I remember reading the back of a Lead Belly album, and he said, no, it said on it, Lead Belly's voice was so big, you had to turn your record player down compared to other records. Yeah. And I thought, oh, having a big voice would be fun. And I tried it, and I could do it. Wow. So I didn't ask any questions, I just continued to do it. <laughs> and I'm so pleased to say that uh, the Eurovision Song Contest played an enormous part in your success. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what happened was a lot of the album was written while I travelled around Europe by myself about just over a year ago, I think. And uh, I stopped off in Malmo and it was the Eurovision Song Contest final in Malmo. Now, I'd never seen it before. But I was staying, I'd been put in touch with these girls that lived in Mamo, so I was oh, with yeah. them and they said, let's... <laughs> <laughs> and they said we should go and watch the Eurovision, you could watch it in parks and stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, you can't buy alcohol after a certain time in Malmo, which was an issue, seeing as we were watching... Yeah, Eurovision something Song you need concert. to be drunk yeah, to watch. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I found myself, I, I find myself. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean, yeah, it helped. We, we found... Uh, <laughs> This guy very kindly sold us a bottle of rum in the park, and uh, <laughs> the bottle of rum ended up inside me, and uh, I missed my train the next morning. I was meant to be going to Budapest, and I missed my train. So Budapest was the only city that I was meant to visit that I didn't make it to. Uh, so then I wrote a song called Budapest, a, a, a list of things I didn't have. And trying to tell someone from Hungarian press that the song Budapest has nothing to do with Hungary is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it kills it every time. Have you stayed in touch with the girls in Malmo? Uh, loosely, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, George, congratulations yeah, on everything. It's much. fantastic Thanks. to meet someone who's just, you know, arrived and it's just, you know, have a good, amazing time. So, yes. congratulations. Right. Thank you much. And uh, good luck in the tour. Right, before we go, let's have our first visit to the new series on the Red Chair. Hey, who's up first? show back, I need to build up to that. Yeah. I just didn't have the emotional energy to cope with that. I, I, I apologise. Come back and see us later in the series. I'll, I'll hear your story then. <laughs> I feel bad now. It's not that bad. <laughs> uh, uh, who's up next? Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> what's your name? My name's Lucy. Lucy. Lovely Lucy. And uh, what do you do, Lucy? I'm a buxom barmaid. A barmaid. Fabulous. Where do you do the barmaiding? Twickenham. In t oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no, they're loving Twickenham. <laughs> All right. Uh, off you go with your story. So, I've been scouting my whole life. Um, when I was about 12... So, sorry, I need to stop you. You've been what your whole life? Scouting, as in... Oh, being a bit scout. Of a nerd. Oh, I see. Being a scout. Yes. Uh, and a bird, on one it? camp, I was about 12. It was quite rainy. And it was about a half-hour walk from the toilets. Uh, wake up in the middle of the night, I suddenly realise, oh, God, oh, I, I got a poo. So I've taken a bag and some tissues with me, you know, being prepared, the scout that I am. And I look at the bag and I think, yeah, 
I'm gonna have to. I can't make it all the way. So I went in the bag and I thought, I'm just gonna lob it and I won't have to deal with it. Someone else can, we'll be fine. So I throw it as far as I think I can, go back to bed, wake up in the morning, everyone's laughing and shouting, something's happening, get out of my bunk bed, go outside and, oh God, oh, on the branch just outside the door, about head height, there's the bag. <laughs> Very visibly, there's a poo in the bag. <laughs> Never confessed. So to everyone who was on that camp, this is my confession. That was mine. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait a question. She says she pooped. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Number two. Yeah. 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 She yeah. didn't say she wiped. I had a tissue. I took tissue. She had a tissue. Oh, I'm not well, completely well, completely oh, I might poo in a bag, but at least I'm going to wipe. Yes. Come oh, on. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to know: is there a badge for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a steaming turd in a triangle. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can walk. You can walk. Thanks. There you go. Well done, everyone. Right there. And if you'd like to join us on the show and have a go, in that chair you can. Contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, thank you very much to all my guests tonight. George Ezra! Yeah. Rising star Luke Evans, Oscar-winning actress and writer Emma Thompson, and the heartthrob that is Hugh Grant. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody.